Hi, it's Colin Coward. I started the volume to bring you some of the most authentic voices in sports. While you're here, make sure you hit subscribe. Thanks. I wanted to start with two Belichick guys, two young Belichick quote unquote stars. Now, I hate lumping these two together because one guy struggled to win any games, Joe Judge. And one guy, Brian Flores, won 19 games the last two years. So just the two humans in their two industries don't have that much in common. The most important thing that we judge you on, wins and losses. But I've read a lot of articles about Brian Flores. Just because Judge, when you play in New York, even for guys that don't live, that live on the West Coast, it was just, I, I consumed a lot of his content. You know, Flores, besides just whether they won or lost, I didn't follow like the way he coached or the stories about him. Obviously, there was the elephant in the room of the Herbert Tua situation, but just the inner workings of the operation. And one thing I've read some several articles about Brian Flores about how angry the guy was and how people in the building were always on edge when he was coming around. And when you read about Brian or Joe Judge, same type thing. Assistant coaches were walking on eggshells. And listen, to coach football, there is a sternness, there is a seriousness, and there is an element whenever you screw up that coaches, coaching you hard sometimes can come off as anger or creating tension or making people uncomfortable. That's part of the business. But one thing that I've really struggled with, like I understand why Bill Parcells, who was born in the 30s, and by the time he was like 10 years old, World War II had just happened. Belichick and Saban are 70 years old. They were born, when they were 10 years old, World War II happened 12 years ago. Saban's dad owned a gas station in West Virginia. Like, times weren't great. I got news for you. The 50s and the 60s, my parents were both born in the 40s. My dad's brother died in Vietnam. Times were a little bit tougher in the middle of the century than they are for, I don't know, guys like me, Joe Judge, and Brian Flores. You know why? We were born in the 80s. Times have been pretty fucking good. I do not understand how guys that grew up on Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, and booming economies, both these guys, like when Belichick got into the business in 1975, there wasn't much money going around. You didn't get into football for the cash. These guys, before they became head coaches, they were millionaires. Because do you know what you get paid to be a defensive coordinator or a special teams coordinator in the NFL? Seven figs. You make a lot of money. These guys are very, very wealthy. How are they so young and so angry all the time? Now, Brian Flores is what he did clearly worked much better than Joe Judge. Of course it did. Joe Judge can't coach offense or defense. There's a reason when Joe Judge, and listen, I think Joe Judge was completely over his head. I don't believe that about Brian Flores. I think Brian Flores is ready to be a head coach. He proved that. Someone should hire him. But both these guys, for whatever reason, couldn't get along with people in their building. Assistant coaches, players, like the evidence is out. Like we're seeing it. These articles are coming out. They didn't just randomly get fired. That's not the way it works. Even Miami, who's Steven Ross, I'm not acting like he's, you know, the greatest owner of all time, but they had an issue there and they sided with the general manager. And let's face it, sometimes these things, the, the way they play out, it's hard to know all the details, but these two guys struggled to make people like them. They were just super angry. I understand when 60 and 70 year old coaches are angry. Mike Zimmer, Bruce Arians, they got an edge to them. They lived through a lot. They've seen a lot. Their generation tends to be a little angrier. I don't understand. Like, I get why loser guy on Twitter, 35-year-old whose life sucks, who doesn't have any money, wants everyone else to be miserable with them. I get it. These guys, their life's great. They're rich. They're successful. Why? How can they? Are they faking it? Are you really that angry every single day? Because I watch Kyle Shanahan's crew, uh, Sean McVay, even Kyle himself. Uh, I saw this interview he did with Mike Mike McDaniel. kind of went viral. He's interviewing for Miami. Obviously, even LaFleur, who I also say has a little edge to him. They are much happier of a crew. I get why Belichick and Saban are mad. Now, those two guys, Flores, worked his entire career for Belichick. Joe Judge worked for Saban and Belichick. 
Do these guys just see that guy and go, I'm going to copy what they do? I'm going to just act every day like it's the worst day of my life? Because that's what it feels like. It doesn't make that much sense to me. You have to be true to yourself. Now, if you truly are a miserable SOB, 24-7, 365, then I guess that's who you are. But I find it difficult to be that mad when you're that young and that successful. And your life has been that much better than the people of generations before you. You don't have that much in common. They just missed World War II. You were born into the MTV generation. Our lives do not parallel each other. They actually have nothing in common. They, they really don't. Back in their day, you could buy a sweet home for like 40 grand. Check Zillow right now. You ain't sniffing that, obviously. So I, I think these guys both need to look themselves in the mirror and go, there is nothing wrong with being stern. And if you're not Pete Kale or Andy Reid, you don't need to be pretend you're happy. But you can't be angry every single day when you're 40 years old and you were born in 1982. Because if I'm a 26-year-old player, I look at you, I go, you can't be this mad. No fucking way on God's green earth. It's not possible. I understand how Belichick's a curmudgeon or Zimmer's a curmudgeon. I get it. Help, Mike McCarthy has a famous story when he was getting into coaching. He, was, he worked a toll booth at night to pay the rent because he was an unpaid intern, I think, at the University of Pittsburgh. Like, that's hard. You know, it's probably hard in the late 70s, early 80s. These guys, when they were coming to their owners, like the late 90s, both you guys played Division I football. One thing these guys, and listen, Joe Judge has a lot longer. Joe Judge needs to learn a side of the ball. You need to be able to coordinate, bro. Flores can't. So I, I, I'm not trying to lump these two together in terms of success. Flores was dramatically more successful than Joe Judge. But I will lump these guys together. It feels like they're copying their mentor, and their mentor is the same guy. Their mentor's grumpy, but he's old, but he's also successful. It works. You can't be grumpy as a young guy. When I see a grumpy 38-year-old, I run the other way. When I see a grumpy 70-year-old, I go, oh, there's my, there's my guy like my dad. <laughs> you know, I'm used to that generation. We understand it. There's a big difference. And people, and especially players and your scouts, your, you know, the people working for you, they understand. You're going to have bad days. You're going to be pissed off. There's nothing wrong with that. You're allowed to be mad. But you can't be mad every day. It's impossible. It's like Joe Judge. They paid you $15 million to go away. How could you possibly be mad? You were making millions of dollars every year. Now your team sucks. You're mad after a loss. No problem. But to be that angry all day, every day, I, I, it just blows me away. I, I, I cannot relate. And you know who else can't relate? Some players. They, they, they don't think it's real. And we have a long line now of Belichick guys, executives too. Scott Pioli did this when he went to Kansas City. Mangini did this crap. Josh McDaniels did it when he go to Denver. It turns people off. The reason it works for Bill Belichick, because that's truly who he is. No one would ever dispute it. I've known countless people that work for him. This is not an act. It does feel like with Flores and definitely would judge that it's an act. And the moment you put on an act, when you're the leader of a group, whether it's 10 people you know, in a classroom or whether it's 53 guys, a coaching staff, and a scouting staff, you get sniffed out. And the moment you get sniffed out, people turn on you. And both these two guys, a long history of Belichick guys, they get turned on because they don't think that's actually you. Like the reason, like watching LaFleur or even Sean McVay, everyone was shitting on Sean McVay for going to party in the end zone last week uh, against the 49ers. Here's what I'll say. I don't love it. You know, I, I, I like my coach to be a little more even keel. When I, Coach Reed, you don't, he doesn't act, touchdown, bad play. He acts the same. I think Kyle Shanahan's personality is much closer to his, you know, and like Belichick's. He doesn't get too high. He doesn't get too low. But Sean is true to himself. Sean's very, honestly, if I was a head coach, not that I ever could be, or I would have the capability to do, I would probably end up being more like Sean McVay. I'm just, too, I'm an emotional guy. I would celebrate too. But at least that's him. At least he's being real. And I, I think that's a problem. That these Belichick guys completely they just struggle to be themselves, and they get themselves in trouble, even when they're having success, like Brian Flores, who's crushing it. Now, maybe I'm overthinking this, and it was simple. Brian Flores wanted to get the hell out of there. 
who would want to be tied to two up? Wouldn't blame him. If that's the actual truth, he was being a dick on purpose. And he's actually not even like that. Then I'll be like, hey, listen, I was wrong. I don't know. You know, he was there three years, clearly rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And I, I just, you can't be that angry if you're not actually that angry. And if you're born in the mid 80s and you've been making now seven figs for a while, I'm calling bullshit. Thanks for watching Three and Out. You can check out the podcast below in the description. And make sure you subscribe right now to the Volumes YouTube channel.